Do you also believe it's not the size that matters, but how you use it? If so, I'd like to introduce you to my little friend, the pocket type. This guy is tiny. Uh, banana for scale. It is much smaller than the banana. You can definitely fit it in your hand like this. You could also put it in your pocket if you want to. It is so small, it doesn't even really fit on this keyboard stand. Now the pocket type isn't a new product. We've been selling this now for over four years, but after doing you know, a few videos on the Hyper 7, the biggest keyboard that we sell, I thought it might be nice to do a video on the smallest keyboard and give this little guy a bit of love. This little guy specifically has been with us for four years. Um, he's a bit dusty, a bit dirty, a bit bruised and battered. Um, he's been doing many, many keyboard meetups, and in that time he has been picked up, held by, and fiddled with by hundreds upon hundreds of keyboard fans. So he's definitely past his prime. But that's okay, by the end of this episode we'll build a new one and we can let this guy retire and put him in the cupboard with his keyboard friends. It was designed back in, I think, 2019 or 2020 by a friend of MacBoards named Evelyn and during the COVID years it was very popular. Uh, it's a perfect little, you know, build project for when people are stuck at home. Um, I won't lie, it's not great as a keyboard. You see, to have a keyboard this small with this many keys, you can't just use, you know, Cherry MX switches. Imagine trying to fit 60 in the size of this. You have to use special little uh, proper mechanical switches. They're like little button switches and they just come with these little caps and they're very stiff and they're very clicky, quite loud. Ironically, this keyboard strength is not as a keyboard, but as a build project. Um, it's great if you want to you know, have a little project to practice your soldering on or you want to learn a new skill or you just want something that'll be quick and easy to build and to put in like a little display somewhere or something. It's you know cheap, so if you screw anything up, it's easy to replace and it's pretty simple and quick to build. There are some cool things you can do with it though, like most of our products, the limit to it is your sort of ingenuity and creativity. We've seen some people do some very cool things with it. This one here is my favorite. This cyber deck built by user More Keyboards on Reddit is absolutely awesome. I mean, look at it. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Probably not that useful to actually do any work on, but I'd love to have one of these just to take with me around places and to show off and to put up on display. It's absolutely fantastic. Next, we've got this wooden case by user SF Gabe, along with a Bluetooth controller. An absolutely wonderful piece of woodworking. It looks really cool. And Godders on GitHub has designed these 3D printed keycaps, which I'm sure they are much better to use than the uh, default keycaps, and they look very nice. And lastly, we don't have any pictures or videos of this, but we've had quite a few people tell us that they've put a Bluetooth controller in theirs and then they've connected up to their TV. And what they do is when you're on Netflix or Prime and you want to search a show, rather than using your controller to sort of click through all the letters on the screen, you just grab your pocket type, just quickly type what you want, hit enter, and bam, you're watching your favorite show. Um, just like that. So yeah, I think the limit with a little project like this is down to your imagination. If you can imagine it, you can probably build it. Uh, talking of which, I think we'll do a quick little build video and just show how quick and easy it is to build one of these. Then maybe we'll get some people in the office to do a little typing test on it so you can do the highest words per minute. So, to build your pocket type, you're going to need a few things. Firstly, a pocket type kit, either black or white, depending on your preference. Uh, a controller, we're using an RP2040, uh, available from our store, but you can use any controller if it has the correct footprint, as long as you know how. Uh, a soldering station, uh, a fan to blow away those pesky fumes, some solder, clippers, a solder sucker, in case you make a mistake, a uh, screwdriver, and a George. This is a George. You don't need one, but he's a lot better at soldering than I am. So for the build portion of this video, he's going to be taking over. Could you get off the table, please? Right, the first thing we're going to need to do is test the controller. To do this, you can hold down the boot button, plug in your USB, and it should pop up just like a USB flash drive. You can then drag and drop your firmware across to the folder, and you should be all done. Our next step is going to be to bend the diodes. Uh, we can do this uh, using a straight edge like with the PCB. Line the diodes up and simply push them over like so. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other side, which may be a little bit trickier. There we go. Okay, now we've got our bent diodes. Uh, we can take the shielding off and get ready to insert them to the PCB. Make sure you've got the PCB the correct way around. Uh, 
You want the controller on the left side so you can see the correct markings for the diodes on the top. Uh, to insert your diodes into the PCB, there is a line on one side of the diode and an arrow on the PCB. You want the arrow to line up with the black spot on the PCB. Make sure you've got the correct orientation. Line the legs up and slide it through. You can flip it over and bend the legs to hold it in place. Now we've got all the diodes in place, we can start soldering. I recommend a temperature of 350 degrees. Uh, you can take your time, there's no need to rush. Uh, you can gently heat up the pad with a soldering iron and feed the solder in slowly. Now we've got all the diodes soldered, uh, nice and neatly, uh, we can quickly move on to the LEDs. Now, they've got two different lengths of leg. The long leg is the positive side and that goes into the square hole on the PCB. The red LED goes in the top hole and the green one in the bottom, like so. Again, bend in them to hold them in place. Once they're in place, we can flip it over and solder them on. And once the LEDs are done, we can move over to the resistors. Uh, there's no need to worry about uh, polarity of these. You can just bend them and slide them straight in to the resistor spot on the PTB. And now we can solder the resistors. So now you should have your diodes all soldered, your two LEDs and your resistors. Uh, next up, we're going to bend the diode legs back to get ready to cut them off with our flush cutters. I would highly recommend here you get yourself a pair of safety goggles because they are sharp and they do float off when you cut them. Okay, so now we can just start cutting gently. With all that done, you should now have a PCB that looks something like this and we can move on to inserting the switches. With the diodes pointing towards you, you can insert the switches with the legs to each side, like so. With all the switches in place, we can use the acrylic to flip it over so they don't fall out and start soldering. Just like before, heating up the pad slightly and feeding in the solder. Now we're ready to start thinking about our controller. The machine pin headers in the RP controller that we sell have one extra leg, so you will have to cut it off. And then we can, with the long legs down, insert it into the PCB. Again, now we just flip it over and get ready to solder. And now those are all soldered, we'll get our safety glasses again and cut off the excess on the bottom of the PCB. We can now take off our safety glasses again and position our controller. You want the chips facing up and you will have an extra pin at the top but they're not required for this build. And again, some more soldering. So that's all the soldering done. Uh, you can plug it into your PC or Mac. Uh, make sure it's all working with the keyboard tester of your choice. If you do have any issues, feel free to reach out on Discord or in our support and we'll be more than happy to help. Uh, all that's left is to assemble the case and keycaps. For the case assembly, make sure you remove the acrylic covers. I'm not going to go through everything here, uh, it's probably easier if you just look at the diagram which will be on screen here, or here, maybe up there. Um, all that's left to do then is pop on your last few keycaps. Shouldn't require too much pressure if they're lined up correctly. And you'll now have a fully working pocket type keyboard. Thank you for that wonderful build guide, George. Everyone give George a big hand. And here is the final product. 
Uh, we added some stickers just to make it a bit more easy to use for the upcoming type test. I think it looks pretty good. Now, let's see who in the MechWars office can actually type on this thing. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, they're so sticky. Oh, I um, skipped a word. Wait, there's no backspace. There is, in the bottom middle. In the... <laughs> no, that's not backspace. Yeah. No, that's tab. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, it doesn't look good for you guys. <laughs> Do we get points for accuracy? Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Now we're moving. That, oh, that's wrong again. Does it sound fast? I mean, sorry, type more words than you. So. <laughs> it could all go wrong somehow. <laughs> it's fine, I'll probably mute him. Oh, he's going. <laughs> Pain. Okay, in a dismal third place with a sad 10 words per minute, yeah! George. <laughs> Second place, Harry, with uh, a trying 14 words oh, per minute. Yeah. First place with a whopping lightning fast 22 words per minute, Dave. No, uh, no. Do you have any words for your fans, Dave? Uh, type, quicker. type quicker. You win things. There we go. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so that is the pocket type. Now we put some stickers on ours. Uh, they were made for us by good friend Steve. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we have a few extra, so if you would like some stickers and you order a pocket type, just put in the order notes to request some stickers. It will be first come, first served though, as we've got a limited amount, so um, not everyone might get one. If you don't get any stickers, you can just write on your keycaps. Uh, most people just write on with pen or Tipex or whatever, and then that works just as well. Well, that is everything. Uh, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye. <laughs> okay, <I'll do. laughs> I may have been putting a silly fish with you.